What's up, you guys? Rex here. So as I plan to do every Sunday, I'll be sharing with you something cool I learned in a week in medical school. So this week, I want to go over one of my favorite surgeries I've ever heard of. So I've already gone over some of my favorite muscles, so maybe this will be a recurring thing of where I'll find a new favorite surgery almost every week. But for right now, the Fontaine repair is the coolest thing I've ever seen. All right, so I just finished my two weeks of cardiology. So I have an exam tomorrow on all things cardiovascular. And so that would make sense that this Fontaine repair is a heart surgery. So first I wanna go over just a little bit of real heart basics in case whoever's watching this is not familiar with it. So on the left here, we have the normal flow through the heart in a very poorly done drawing. So blue is deoxygenated blood, red is oxygenated blood. So blood starts off coming in through the, I just drew an inferior vena cava, but comes back from the veins, goes into the right atrium, then into the left ventricle, and that squeezes blood out through the pulmonary artery. It goes into the lungs here, which are a beautifully drawn not to scale, and it comes back through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium, into the left ventricle, out through the aorta to the rest of the body through all kinds of stuff. The body uses up the oxygen and so then now the blue deoxygenated blood comes back. Deoxygenated blood is not actually blue but that's the common way to draw it since like the blood vessels look a little bit more blue than red. So that's when everything's working great. But now this Fontaine repair is used in the case of a rare birth defect where the valve that is in between this left atrium and this left ventricle called the mitral valve isn't working well. And so if it embryologically develops such that it doesn't form or it is completely closed off, you can get into a case where this left ventricle doesn't do anything. So over here I drew, you have a left ventricle, doesn't do anything. Now this left ventricle, which isn't really doing anything, isn't a huge problem when the baby is a fetus. And the reason for that is because blood is not being oxygenated in the lungs, rather it is being oxygenated in the placenta by the mother's blood. So the whole lungs are sort of cut out of the whole circulatory system. And so what instead happens is blood is shunted from, I'll now draw on this new drawing, from the right atrium to the left atrium via something called the foramen ovale. Additionally, blood does go into the right ventricle goes up into the pulmonary artery, but at this time when the fetus is still developing, the resistance in the lungs is very high, and there is a small connector called the ductus arteriosus, which is right around here, which actually has the blood go into the aorta and go to the rest of the body. So this whole lung area is sort of excluded from the normal circuit. All right, so what is this Fontaine repair that gets around this problem of not having a left ventricle, which is supposed to be the main pump, pumping blood to the entire body. So now what they do is three things. So if we trace the deoxygenated blood, rather than going from the inferior vena cava into the right atrium, they do a connection where it goes directly to the pulmonary arteries and it bypasses this whole side of the heart. And so now that it's in the lungs, it is able to get oxygen and now it's oxygenated and it comes back. And what they do is they actually, sometimes it's still there, the foramen ovale, or they widen it such that now blood flows actually backwards of what it normally would do as a fetus, going from the left atrium into the right atrium. And so it comes here. So that's the little dashed path, which would be behind the two large vessels there. And so now the right ventricle is what is gonna serve as the main pump to go to the entire body. And so they connect the outlet of the right ventricle directly into the aorta. And so that's what now goes to the whole body. And so there's three big changes. The first is that now the inferior vena cava and just that low venous pressure is what's going to the lungs. Next is now blood comes back from the lungs and instead of going from the left atrium into the left ventricle, it goes from the left atrium into the right atrium. And then now the biggest change is instead of having a left ventricle that pumps into the aorta, now you have a right ventricle that pumps into the aorta. And so now you essentially have 
a three-chambered heart. It's really almost functioning as just a two-chambered heart because the left atrium is basically not doing anything. It's now just a throughput pipe. And so now instead of a four-chamber heart, you really just have a two-chamber heart. And it is just mind-boggling to me that this just works, that, that we can basically like hack up all of these different connections inside a little newborn infant's heart, connect tubes to different places, and the heart still works. It's able to regulate your heart rate. It's able to get blood where it needs to go, and the child is able to survive. Now, this isn't a super long-term solution. I am sure that the child is not able to exercise as much as someone with born without any heart defects, but sort of the goal of the operation is to keep the child alive so that it can grow big enough to be able to get a heart transplant from an adult heart. So this is sort of a temporary fix until the child is large enough to receive an adult heart from a donor. And so it's not perfect, but the fact that it works at all is absolutely mind boggling to me. Like this is absolutely an example of an operation that completely saves a child's life and was not possible whatsoever through 99% of human history that the child would regrettably die very shortly after being born. But modern medicine, how about that? And it's like, I need to look up who Dr. Fontan is, if that's a doctor, that where he got the idea, we're just gonna start taking hoses and connecting them to different places and hope it works. Like that's a really bold strategy to try out. But even the fact that it's a rare enough birth defect that I guess Dr. Fontan probably had a patient that died and then had to think up some solution and wait around for the next time, or he just published it and maybe someone else did it. I'd really love to know the history. So if any of you know the history, because I'm busy studying for my exam tomorrow, so I don't have time to look it up. So if you happen to know, let me know in the comments down below. But in general, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I'd love to hear about them down below. If you want to hear more of these fun facts and cool things I'm learning in medical school, make sure you subscribe so you can find your way back here. As always, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video. And until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great. Thank you.